Okay, so on January 1st, 1962, four young men walked into Decca Studios in Northern London to perform a one-hour audition for Decca record producer Tony Mayhem. After belting out 15 quick songs, they all went home to wait and hear Mayhem's decision. The next day, the people at Decca got together and decided it was their position that A, guitar groups were on the way out, and B, the group they just saw audition had, quote, no future in show business. However, they could not have been more wrong, as the group they shot down that day was the Beatles, who went on to sell over 2.3 billion records worldwide, and become possibly the most critically acclaimed band of all time. So with that in mind, I want to introduce myself. My name's Daniel Sullivan. I'm the manager of the independent folk rock group, Okerville River. I want to thank all of you EMI record executives for coming today to consider cashing in on the very profitable opportunity that would be signing Okerville River to I'm going to explain exactly how it would be profitable for you, and then I want to illustrate some more quality aspects of the group by comparing them to some other groups and musicians. So, I might be biased, but I think Ogreville River is one of the best indie groups performing today. It seems the public agrees with me that their album sales have been steadily increasing since their inception in 2002, with their most recent album titled I Am Very Far, peaking at number 32 on the US Billboard Top 200 and getting to number five on the US independent label, independent label charts. It's also important to note that with my intimate knowledge of the lead singer, Will Chef, I can contend that future albums can also reach the same level of sales, if not better. They've in no way lost any inspiration. If anything, they're hitting their stride this year. It's also important to note that critics seem to love the band. For instance, Pitchfork Media called their most recent album, I Am Very Far, oh wait, I'm sorry. No, Pitchfork Media called Will Chef one of indie music's most ambitious thinkers, and Under the Radar Magazine called I Am Very Far one of the best albums of 2011, giving it nine out of 10 stars. Wrong, sorry. Um, so they've come a long way from their modest beginnings. So what is this specific genre? It's a more indie folk, kind of in the realm of bright eyes. Right. Um, they've come a long way from their modest beginnings, and over the course of the last decade, they've amassed a very large and devoted fan base. So it seems to me that all signs point to their next album being a hit. And that's why I encourage you to sign them today. I believe with your superior resources, they would be able to make not only their highest quality, but highest selling album to date. If I were in your chair, I wouldn't want to pass up on the opportunity to reap some of the profits of these future albums. I can see some of you are still skeptical, though. You're wondering, well, what exactly sets Oakerville River apart from bands like Bright Eyes and all the other indie bands out there today? Please allow me to explain. See, when I try to compare Okerville River to any other group out there, I feel that they always outshine the competition. Analyze some of their most popular albums, like 2005's Black Sheep Boy, or their most recent I Am Very Far. You see they demonstrate a lot of the folk qualities that make bands like Bonnie Bear or Iron Wine so popular in the more indie alternative crowds. While they also demonstrate a keen ability to produce poppier, more accessible tracks that have gained them that are more comparable to bands like Arcade Fire and The Shins. And they similarly do so without sacrificing any lyrical or musical depth. This ability recently gained them comparisons to Bright Eyes frontman Connor Roberst and Neutral Milk Hotel's Jeff Mangum, again by Pitchfork Media. For, these, for those of you who don't know, Mangum and Oberst are two of the most well-respected singer-songwriters in indie history. So a comparison is very complimentary. Where I see them as being superior, though, is their ability to take aspects from all of these similar groups and combine them into a richer sound that they further, that they further improve with Will Chef's signature dynamic vocal style that ranges from warm and folky to passionate and intense. And they tie that all together with lyrics that are deep and thought-provoking and song orchestration that's very tight and complex. This ability also recently gained them another comparison to the legendary Bob Dylan, this time by Michael Tedder of Spin Magazine. 
So all of this says to me that Wall Oakerville River may share a lot with some contemporaries, as well as some of the greats. Where they stand out is their ability to bring these aspects together into a broader, richer sound that has been proven to sell records. And so to wrap this up today, I introduced you to the independent folk rock group Oakerville River. I explained how signing them to EMI would be profitable for you because of their already climbing record sales, high critical acclaim, and ever-growing fan base. I illustrated that there's a high and sustainable demand for their music and that they show no signs of losing momentum. So I want to present to you the unique opportunity, sign them to your label, create a partnership that will allow them to keep making high quality, high selling albums, and for you to cash in on some of the profits. I have a contract drawn up that I'd urge you to look over and sign whenever you're ready so that we can get this partnership underway. Please think carefully. I don't want you to be remembered in the future as independent music's Tony Meehan. And that's all I have for you guys today. So I want to thank everybody for listening. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to answer them now.